you know, I already put you down as president after about five minutes. So uh, I think I met him on the 17th or 18th of December, and his term was ending at the end of the year, and he knew it. And uh, I guess I had a pulse. I was on time for breakfast. Uh, I mean, that was it. So uh, I'm a Jersey guy. I live here full time. I say, how you doing a lot? I'll try to, you know, I'll try to not do that at this meeting, but um, you know, it is really good to meet you. I really wanted, I got a little pushback because this meeting is a members only meeting. And I figured I really want to, you know, this is my first meeting, you know, and here I stand before you as president. How many here is this your first meeting? I mean, just to get an idea. So you have a little bit of a cross section. You know, I didn't know what to expect, but I, I think we did good with the seats. I think we estimated properly. We are going to have, we, I, I promise you, we are going to have some really big meetings. We are going to have to have them over at Mariners High School, that seat 950. We're going to have some of these meetings coming because what we have to show you today, um, I think there's going to be a lot of surprises. but. Let me just start off before uh, we go through and get to the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, a couple of things I really wanted to say to you right out of the gate. We have some new people um, that we want to introduce to you. We'll have them come up real quick. Um, but there's a few things that I wanted to say to you. And the kind of person I am, I'm no stranger to nonprofits. Um, but I really want to extract what you want because you know, I'm just an extension, we're neighbors. I really wanna know so we can communicate to everyone, developers, elected officials. I need the pulse and that's why we wanted to have today a general membership meeting that is limited to members. So that was kind of what I was looking for. And I think this time is very unique to Cape Coral. Um, change is coming, you know, and. I think like you, like me, it's speaking to you right now. And I also think it's why you came tonight. You see it. We're going to show you what's happening. But let's see if anyone can get the person who, who really put together this phenomenal quote. It's, to improve is to change. To be perfect is to change often. Anyone, anyone know, anyone know who wrote that? So to improve is to change. To be perfect is to, is to change often. That was Winston Churchill. So I just thought that was uh, fitting for this. Cape Coral, the largest master plan community in, in, in the entire uni United States. Um, we are looking at in the Cape, 400 miles the most extensive canal system in the world. Venice has 26 miles. Cape Coral, 400. If you ever been to Amsterdam, 60 miles. This goes to show you how big this master plan was. And I think it ties into the last remaining undeveloped area of our city. Here we are, we're sitting here today, right? And this is great opportunity for, uh, for developers. How do you get the massive amount of land that we have? How do you secure that in this state, any state? This is an opportunity for developers. And I tell you, it's the very reason that this association was formed in 20, 2004. So a lot, of, a lot of planning, a lot of vision going forth over those last now almost 20 years. So I just wanted to go over some things that are important to our group. And whether you know it or not, we are pro smart development, okay? But there are things that we are not interested in and there are things that we need, restaurants, right? But we have also, before my time here, we've become the most trusted source for information in the media for anything impacting Northwest Cape. If you Google anything, Seven Islands, anything, we come up first, okay? So, and Paul in the background, our web developer, had a lot to do with that. 
But I think most importantly, together, we're here. We've been here. We invested here. We're building out our neighborhoods. We are the stakeholders, right? So any development that comes in this area or where we are, it's going to border one of our properties. We are the landlords. I just want everyone to know that. It's very important that we shape our town, part of town, excuse me. So I think what our leadership would like to know tonight is what is your collective voice? You know, how do we accurately represent your interests? So let's begin right now. Linda? Some of you may want to move, but I think you guys are safe. I think it's probably just this area that we're looking at. I, I, you know, in the world we live in, everything is full disclosure, non-transparency uh, and everything else. So we don't want someone to be on camera if they don't want to be on camera. This is going on the website. This is probably going in the media. So I think we're good. If you folks want to move, I think now's a good time. Next, <laughs> next slide. So, uh, oh yes, we put this in. I just thought it was a great thing. We're getting away from this for some reason as a country, but I just thought it was a great thing. You can go back to that slide, Linda. Some of us may have forgotten the words. Uh, so here's a flag, there's a flag here, but I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So um, we'll go over the agenda. You know, we're going to introduce you to some new folks. I'm one of them. Um, Linda, everybody know Linda? <laughs> Her position was so massive that we actually attracted someone in our web. We got somebody caught in it and tried to, tried to kind of teach them the secretary position. And it didn't work out too well. We broke the job up. Uh, Ralph Huber, over here filming. Ralph, why don't you stand up a second? Ralph is our communications chair. And guys, why don't you stand up, Ed? He's our vice president. Ed and I met at the same time at his house. Never met him before. And uh, we walked in and, uh, you know, we, we hit it off. Um, if we can go back to that last slide, I just wanted to make sure everyone knows. So. This secretary position is now probably 60, 40, it's probably 30% of what it was. If someone can please, you know, tackle me by the end of the meeting to take this position here, that would be great. Or if you know someone that may wants to explore this, we really need some help there. Um, we'll go over the focus project updates. Um, we, have, we have a city arborist in the, in the room, which I'll have come up. Um, but also, part of what we wanted to do is extract out your voice. So we sent out a survey, and we have some information to share on that. And then we'll go have the room for you, which is probably the most important thing, so we can get this done to hear from you. Okay. Next slide. Ed, why don't you come up a second? And I'll take the podium for a couple. I, can't, I definitely can't say everything as well as he can. And that's why I took the vice president position because he's going to be better at that face up front. Okay, but uh, I just wanted to introduce myself, and I've been around now almost. It'll be three years in September. We moved to Northwest, my wife and I. She's way in the back corner, uh, and uh, all I have to say is I wanted to get involved in the neighborhood. I volunteered for this position, and I hope I could uh, help make things better in the neighborhood. <laughs> words I'm really pumped up about Ralph because I actually was involved with getting him here so well this really has, is Linda's fault actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was involved with some of the meetings and stuff that was going on because I moved to Cape Coral two and a half years ago to retire in paradise 
And I kept seeing this stuff going on. I said, I have no control over this paradise. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> Part of that was the, the low internet. So I said, don't, can't have, we don't have a high speed internet. So I worked with Linda pretty closely try, to try to get that organized in front of the council. Then I saw this ad come up and said, we're looking for somebody to do communications. Well, I probably am the communications officer, one of the biggest uh, veterinary medical associations and not-for-profits in the state. So I think I have a little experience, so I should try this. So I'm really hoping to make a change, like uh, you said. Thanks, Ron. From my neighborhood. And I live east of Birdstow. Thank you. Okay, let's go, Linda. Let's get this done. So we talked about the secretary position. Go on to our website. Um, there's duties there. It's always nice to have a job description. Um, Kevin Black and I are trying to hire people, so these are very effective. Next slide. So the, so the chair... Oh, sure. I'm, sure. Uh, you know what I'll do? It's, it, it is kind of tough. And I, I'm, can you got it? Okay. Set up all meetings, take minutes those types of things. So let's have, um, so we have, we have two medical situations that, that sidetrack some of our uh, committee chairpersons, and one of them is Tricia, the other is John Smart, and the other is Don Freeman. It's a dynamic group that meets every month with us, and um, they are the pillars of the organization. I say that because they're getting the information. The president, interchangeable. You know, the president comes and goes, but I think the pillars of the organization are here. This is exactly why I'm here. This drew me to this group. So uh, why don't we start out with Ed, who's filling in for Tricia, then he'll introduce our arborist, and uh, we'll turn it over to Ed. Thanks, Ed. So, I'm, I'm uh, presenting this for, that's, uh, Um, well, Ed would be the environmental, so if you want to skip to that. Or I can have Ed go back and I'll yeah. be. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That, 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 go back one. So, uh, uh, Trisha White is the chairperson for this, and she is not here tonight, so I, I volunteered to do it for her, so bear with me, please. And it's very short. Next slide. So uh, some of the big things here is that there's another clean the cake coming up April 1. I want everybody to know that. Uh, and then a lot of the details are there on the slide. Uh, the biggest thing is where we're meeting, 8.30 at Tropicana Park. If you don't know where that's at, it's at the end of Tropicana Road and Old Burn Store. Okay, it's an empty lot right now, not a park. Um, and uh, you should register to keep Lee County beautiful so that you can get uh, the planning done with the insurance or the insurance and pizza planning. Or I guess gonna, I didn't go to this last year, so I assume there's going to be pizza there when they plan it. Um, and you're going to go around, and everybody's going to get a little area of where to clean up. So, and then there's dumpsters to put them in, or you go back to the park to put them in. So, if you are signing up, that's where you're going to get all the details on that on the web page. Um, the read convenience is 11.30, so it's not that long, a couple hours in the morning. And then um, you can receive volunteer hours by when you sign up. There was something else on my sheet that's not on there. The remember for the other one. Hold on a second. How much do I on my sheet? I just wanted to put in, there's another clean cleanup time, and that's to help the Pine Island and Matt Lachey people that got really beat up. Yeah, Ed, they, um, they, they are not certain of that date yet. That's oh, that's when you took it off? Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right, so they were supposed to be on the Sunday the 26th, but now I guess the date's changed. So it, it just be, uh, go on the website and see if you can find out about it. If you could help, that'd be great, too, for to help those guys clean up their area. Um, so that's fine. All right, next slide. Uh, Trisha just got an award while she was gone, actually, uh, from Lee County Beautiful. And it was presented to her for an outstanding site captain. So we're really happy that she got this award out of all the other people. So that's a, that's a great honor for her to get. Next slide. And now I'm going to turn it over to our uh, city arborist, who is the first for the city, right? 
Yep. First artery for the city, uh, Omar Lee. Good evening, everyone. Thanks a lot for coming. Um, so, Patricia White had me come in uh, just to give you guys a brief overcap of the city's uh, medium beautification uh, landscape efforts. The city has a five year uh, medium beautification project. This priority list is adopted by city council. Um, and I just wanted to kind of give you guys a brief synopsis, but we're currently working on uh, what Nicholas West was completed. Uh, Rose Garden and Chiquita projects are the <coughs> current projects that are on their way right now in the middle of construction. Um, and then the Country Club Boulevard Embers Parkway, which Embers Parkway is in the Northwest Cape area. This is in the what's being called the transportation design component. Uh, one of the things they brought me on board for was to kind of look at the delivery method of our um, of our projects. Uh, we're going into um, a more uh, higher base scope of work, including uh, media, uh, curbing and, and uh, access management and other transportation components. So Embers Parkway, number five, and number four, the Country Club uh, Boulevard uh, project, those are on the transportation design stage, which will include access management um, and the curbing design to be followed shortly by the landscape design and installation. And uh, we're starting, uh, to move into the Embers Parkway, number six, Chiquita Boulevard, uh, east to Southwest First Street. And lastly, uh, Vincent Street will be the, the last project in this median priority list. Of course, this will be updated um, in the next year or so uh, by council to add additional sites. Uh, we also, the city, I just wanted to let everyone know, we have a median beautification program, which used to be called the Adopt a Median Program. There's one median on CETUS that was actually the first um, uh, per, uh, participant of, of, this, of this program. Uh, the program gives the opportunity for folks who want to beautify medians that are not within the five-year priority plan to team up and work with the city to develop uh, these, plan, uh, these medians moving forward. And there's a means of, of, uh, of having those folks recognized through uh, signage, like you can see on CETUS, there were some the donors were, 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 uh, were uh, put on signages uh, to allow folks to know their contribution to the program. Um, and that's that's pretty much what they what they found in here. Before. You know, if, if you guys have any more questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. But, uh, we received an email from uh, Mayor Gunter mm -hmm. saying that the Embers Parkway duplication was funded in this year's budget. Correct. And would be completed this year. September 30th. Yeah, so that was January 19th that he sent that email. And he sent that email. So we, like I said, when, when, when we did this, when we did this uh, project, we got into this project, we realized that unlike the Chiquita, you can go back to the last slide. So unlike the Rose Garden Chiquita project, those two projects had, did not have access management, did not have curbing design, did not have the transportation component. We realized that when you add the transportation component to it, it adds a whole other uh, aspect to the project, which has to be completed. You have to complete transportation before you can put in the landscape. And so that's what we're working on at this current time, and that's why this has been updated. What does that mean? The this so This was the Embers Parkway from Old Firm Store to Firm Store? Correct, number five. <coughs> yes, number five. So if you look at the Chiquita Boulevard project and the uh, Rose Garden project, those medians are not curved. There was no access management, meaning that the median design wasn't altered in any way to allow for better traffic flow. Um, and that component alone is an engineering component, a traffic engineering component, which requires a whole other aspect. And you need to complete that component before you can jump into the landscape. And if not, you're, you're, you're essentially putting the cart before the horse. So um, that's why we would... So we're supposed to you're, well, you're in the design process right now for the transportation component, but it will be pushed out. The entire completion of the project will be pushed out. Sorry. And that's why we've updated it over here. See, number five has been updated, uh, and number six and seven have been updated to reflect that on the, on the uh, status. Are sidewalks going to be included in that landscape plan? Sidewalks are not part of the medium beautification plan. That's another program in itself, uh, which is spearheaded by the uh, traffic engineers, and there's a priority list uh, for that. 
Um, you know, I can tell you that, uh, you know, we're looking at ways, like I said, to improve project delivery methods because uh, this type of uh, venture hasn't been seen in the past in their city. And that's why I'm looking at ways of, you know, I guess improving efficiency of uh, delivery of these projects so that we can have these uh, meetings completed at a faster pace. Um, as far as the uh, UEP expansion, I've also added additional language into the UEP expansion asking for some of these curbing of medians and access management to take place at that time to allow us to have an opportunity to landscape these medians within the Northwest Cape area in particular um, at a faster rate than, than was seen in the past. Go ahead. Through through this through these programs here, like through 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 this or through the adopt the median program. There's two programs. There's the, there's the median uh, beautification that's being sponsored by the city. The city's funding these these projects here as capital projects. And when would it get when would it be on the list? Is that what you're asking? Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. So then, it, it, it would not forego this process. It's on a whole other schedule in itself. Um, we're we're currently right now. Actually, tomorrow I have a meeting with a CTAC. We've updated the policies for the uh, median uh, beautification or the adopted adopted medium program um, to allow for more streamlined application process and turnaround process. I can tell you it. it it really depends on the on, on that program. It really depends on the uh, I guess efforts of the applicant to move you know, to progress to the, to the forward. Typically, these projects are seeing like one you know you can see here that you know 1.3 miles, two miles, mile in length. When we do adopt the medians, we're looking at one median or maybe two medians or three at most. So the project does flow a little bit faster. Um, I, I you know go ahead. The Cedars. What's the ballpark uh, for a project like that one, uh, numbers wise? That median with, um, I have to go back, but I, I believe that that median with the curving, like with everything included, yeah, it, was, yeah, it, it was about, I think, 23 or 25,000, that, that median. So those plantings, the, um, yeah. the irrigation and everything. Yeah, I can give you a, an exact number if you guys want to. I don't really share it with, with Jerry, but we have. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we and have. We, we have that because uh, we've done comparisons uh, along the, the last couple of years. Yeah, uh, and the, I, I just wanted to say that um, if we get through, will you hang out? Will you uh, hang out with us, or actually, are you leaving? I actually need to get going, but okay, right, so, I'm, so I'm, I'm I'll give you guys my email. Yeah, we're gonna get Leon's email. You can go yeah. direct. What I want to do is get through. And then what we can do is we can fire away. I want to really give you the floor. We want to move this out of the way and, and get to you guys and gals so we can really extract information. So uh, let's get let's get you going and uh, we'll get your email. We can contact you directly. No okay. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, this is just going into the medium beautification uh, Project, what you know, what the uh, what's involved, and then what's the next slide? Because uh, Patricia White put this together. Right. Um, yeah. So then the, the, this uh, link, which we can also give you as well, it gives you a link to the Adopt the Medium program, uh, which is the program for those folks who want to volunteer and, and, and adopt the medium to uh, to beautify. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I was looking at Omar's eyes, and uh, I figured we'll, we'll get all the information too. And you got to realize, you know, Council Member Long, um, you know, he's been he as he called me, he said, Jerry, do I need to be there tonight? I said, No, you know, this is a uh, when we need you, we'll call on you. We have we're going to have some big issues here. So uh, I asked Don Don Freeman had a little procedure, so he asked me to take over the utility expansion project. That is UEP. You hear that term all the time. 
So let's go, let's go through this. This is just an example of, uh, I'm sure in the news you've heard what is ahead of us as far as cost, okay? So what we decided to do, what Don decided to do is, okay, let's look at what's in progress right now. And when you look at uh, Santa Barbara Boulevard and heading east and in north one west, the construction in 2023, which is going to be this year, of course, and this is underway, we're taking this to say, okay, when they get to our neck of the woods, what is it going to look like? What is the cost? So next slide. So the resident informational meeting in this area was held on the 8th. The packet was made available. We have it. it we have the entire uh, actually presentation showing illustrations of the section to the street that's going to be removed to what point in the egress area. So we have all that. How the sewer lines are hooked up. I mean, drill down. We have a large volume of material on that. We are, I think Don and I said, we're gonna publish that on the website for you. So um, the projects have been bid. Construction will start in the spring. They're moving on this. So most of the residential lots, as you know, are 10,000 square feet. That is a double lot. And the assessment is 33,300. So we thought we'd share, the media got a hold of this. There was a report on this, it got out. But now we're seeing that we're looking at, not only are they looking to start it this year, but the assessments are gonna be due. So this is fast turnaround. And one of the things I would really like to look at is this, is this APR. Because it, it, when you start to add interest to these types of things, and in the current economy, in the current interest market, um, I really want to look at that because it, it doubles, it really doubles your cost. So uh, that's one of the things I really want to look at. And um, you're looking at 20, 25, 30 year repayment options. Okay, so next slide. Now, I don't know why I get the gloomy slides. I mean, this one, but this is, um, this isn't printed in my mind. And when Don, you know, got this from the city, if you look at North 3, um, you know, our, our neck of the woods going up to North 11 is funny. Man, it, it's just funny talking to people, talking to you guys. I get these calls from North 11 all the way up. Jerry, do you think, um, I'm hoping that I'm gonna die before. <laughs> I'm hoping they never get here. I'm fine with my, my well, you know? And uh, it's so funny, these calls, and I get a, quite a few of them. It's really an interesting, I should tape some of these for you. It's just really amazing. But um, two things, you're gonna hear about the focus projects. I think you all know what they are, but Hudson Creek up there, that nice little yellow area, that is going to be one during my term. This is, uh, when you look at their executive summary, this is really amazing. I've never seen an executive summary that was a photo. And it said 2,500 homes, another thousand multifamily structures. But the way it's laid out, it's beautiful, but it's going to take a lot of utility work to get that going. And um, you can see how our friends that don't want sewer are projected for 2045. And you can see the focus right now that the city has and the utility you know, market has on Hudson Creek. And we're gonna to talk tonight a lot about the Pine Island Corridor. This is gonna develop right before our eyes and it's coming now. So those are the areas that are really gonna shape who we are. Question? You can't, you can't see the area, you know it. Oh, so, um, the, you can't see what, the lower? We're gonna, we're gonna put the slides up on the website. It's already up there. Yeah, it is up there. It's already right? on the website, yeah. yes. So uh, we're gonna miss Linda. She's saying, Jerry, it's already there. So, but anyway, this is the current schedule of, you know, North 4, North 3, which is just, just above Cetus and then going all the way up 
to Durden all the way up top. Um, look at this, this slide is very significant to where everything is going. And next slide. So North 3 is our area and implementation engineering to be, begin in the spring. Uh, construction to start in 2024 to be completed late 25, mid 26. These are dates right now. And the assessments will probably come at the same time. Questions? When you say at the same time, of what? Uh, right around the initiation or start of construction. Okay. We don't have the structure yet. We don't, we don't. Um, the thing I'm looking at um, as the voice is you have people that have been hooked up for $17,000, okay? So, you know, with the economy and everything else, that's doubling. And then you wanna double again with interest. So, yeah, I mean, this, is, this, is, this has our attention. So I, I don't have that information yet. I think the interest rate you're looking at, six and a half, is the current rate. Who knows? Who knows what the rates are gonna be? So, you know, it's one of the things I wanna bring up because it alters the total cost significantly. You know, if you, it's one thing, okay, you know, I understand things went up, but the interest itself is very, very important. So, yeah, 2% would be nice, yes. I don't know. It's it's all I'm going on is it what they're what they're showing right now. It's if you buy a car, if you're out there shopping, six and a half percent. When you look at the federal funds rate and add your margins, that that's what it costs today. But again, it's a conversation we want to have. So that might be one of those things that we hear from you. Yes, sir. You know, the margins and all that, I, I don't know. You know, you're looking, we, we're going to have a new city manager, okay? So talk about change, right? Um, we have a new city manager that's that's going to obviously come into play. These are, these are really important issues for that new city manager. But I think what, we are, what we're doing is we're trying to get out ahead. We're trying to predict development. We're trying to predict what's going to happen based on what we're learning. And what Don Freeman has put together is just give us an example at six and a half percent, what's happening across the pond over here. So we will get the answers that you're asking for, these questions. Yes, sir. Um, is there a reduction in the assessment if you paid in full? I don't know. I don't know. You know, and Don would know. Don would know, you know, here I am filling in for this massive, you know, no one wanted to do these slides, so I gotta go, so. Uh, but Don will know, we'll get you the, just email me. I mean, we're so accessible, yes. I'm Sam Yaffe, and I went through Dwarf Two, and the process was, if you prepaid when they first sent it out within a certain time frame, you got a reduced rate, if you paid within one, Year later, it was more than the previous year, but it was still a reduced rate if you paid in full. And then it went on your taxes oh. as financed loan. And at any point after it goes on your taxes, you can always pay off the balance, either yourself or if you sell your property, then you pay it off. I think they're going to have. Sam, can you stand up again? Everyone, I want to thank you for getting the award for Tricia. You, you were there at the breakfast and represented us. I was, I was going to personally hunt you down. But thank you. Thank you, Sam. All right, so uh, other projects anticipated, and I think this goes with um, development. 
And when you look at, just remember, again, this is on the website, but these are things that we wanted to highlight. If you see the colors going up Burnt Store Road, and Hudson Creek is, is very unique because we want uh, Ed, myself, John Smart, uh, we visited uh, just north of Hudson Creek at Tranquility Lake. So guess what? There's utilities at, at Burnt Store Road there. How did they develop that? So more to come on that. Um, but there is utilities coming there uh, from other sources. So let's, um, let's wrap this up if we can. This is on the site. There's a lot more to cover. I really want Kevin to come up and uh, really dissect some slides on development. But um, if you look at the other projects planned simultaneously, the Pine Island Road corridor, which kind of seg segues right into development, look at Pine Island Road right now and look at what's going on there. Um, utilities and Burnt Store Road to service Hudson Creek, which I just talked about, they're there. There's some there now. Expansion of Southwest Water Rec Reclamation Plant, the wastewater treatment. When you go, you know, I, I encourage you to go on um, Hudson Creek Development's website and get a look at what's coming. And they're putting a lot of investment into infrastructure. Um, the sewer line extensions on Veterans Parkway. So there's, there's a lot of other projects and these have to do more with big development of 2027. So we're going to turn it over to Kevin Black. Does everyone know Kevin? He's been here a little while. Um, yeah. Kevin, thanks for coming. And I, I think he'll just go right into um, and, and looking at development and for John Smart as well. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. So, yeah, I, I also have a John Dashaw story. So that's how I got into parts. When John calls, you don't think you're going to do something, the next thing you're going to do it. So, uh, Quite, quite, quite the character, quite the salesman. Um, so I, I just want to update on a couple of parts that uh, impact the, uh, the Northwest the most, um, because that's uh, the ones that we're concerned about. As you can tell from the city, the Go Bond is continuing on, they're building Sands Park, finishing that one and a couple others. Uh, we, we still wait, they're coming. They're coming our way, I promise. So next slide. Uh, if you haven't been to Serenia Vista lately, I go there every day because my dogs love it. Uh, so I get to see the progress there. So they are, they are renovating Serenia Vista Park right now off of Cenas and Old Burnt Store. They're going to put in permanent restrooms, and I have a picture over there. That's not what the restroom is going to look like because that's the ugliest restroom you'd ever want to see. So it will absolutely look prettier than that. I'm assured by the city that they will make it much prettier than that. If you go to Joe Stonis Park, you're going to be able to see what the bathroom is going to look like, the restrooms are going to look like. It'll be the same one that you have at Joe Stonis Park. They're going to put a water fountain there. People can refill their water bottles and things like that. Hopefully that reduces the amount of plastic bottles that are thrown around the park from time to time as, as folks do a lot of kayaking and fishing down there. Uh, they're putting in three stormwater drainage basins. I don't want to get out of my ski tips here, but I think that's more of a federal state thing that you must do now. Uh, when you renovate something or build something. So you'll see uh, some big ditches down there and big areas that they've dug out and now have filled in with sod in the past couple of days, but that's for stormwater runoff. They've closed the entrance from Old Burn Store and Cenas. You can no longer exit or enter, although some people are making their own path. Now, I assure you that the city will probably take care of that with some well-placed boulders and palm trees at some point in time. I think that's a great thing. Uh, the speed limits on Burt Store, the way people travel and so forth. I mean, just and entering and exiting there is, I think, it's quite dangerous. So you have to go in behind, follow the signs to go in behind the neighborhood to get there. And I didn't touch on it here, but they also are going to be updating the landscaping as well in the park. And they have a whole list of things that they're going to do. I, I probably could spend another half hour talking about the landscaping changes, but basically they're getting rid of all non-native. I guess plants and, and things out of the park and only Florida native stuff can then be put in the park. So if you go down there and you see some X's on stuff, things like that, that's probably going to be taken out and some new stuff is going to be put in. I understand they're going to shore up the banks a little bit and clean some of that area up around there and start to really beautify the park. So a lot of things coming that was supposed to be done a couple months ago. Unfortunately, we had a thing called Ian come through 
you have delayed everything, and so they are de delayed a bit, but if you go down there, uh, Honk Construction is in there almost every day now, updating and, and making progress happen. So I think probably within the next two months, they will complete most of the renovations in the park. Next slide. Tropicana. So this is where Bashaw got me. So uh, <laughs> the, the littlest piece of land in the Gobon system remains the one that still is not uh, built, but progress is being made. The, we're waiting on the Army Corps of Engineer permitting and the Southwest Florida Water Management District permitting. It's my understanding that anytime you do anything into the spreader canal, you must uh, get permits from these two entities to continue that. And the things that will be happening at Tropicana, like a kayak launch and some other launches that enters into the uh, spreader canal, so things have to be go through the permitting process. The city, this is coming from their January update. I will say the city does, or uh, the parks group does update the, uh, the mayor and city council quarterly on what they're doing with the go bonds, so we do get an update on how things are progressing. Once the contract is signed, they estimate it'll be one year. I wouldn't anticipate with the permitting the way it is. I think you've heard from the Army, about the Army Corps of Engineers at uh, the Yacht Club and how long that was taking. It's probably going to take a while. Probably going to be ready to pay our assessments at the same time, but at least we can go down to the park and, and sit and relax for a second before we put that big bill together. Uh, the go bond estimate for this park in 2018 was 2.9 million, so this is what they estimated it to be. Today, as you can imagine with the way prices are and things with inflation, it's estimated this park now will be about 4.2 million to build with a $200,000 contingency. So all the parks have a contingency building them for uh, ancillary costs and things. So 4.2 million. The city, or I'll go through the other parks and I'll talk about that. Next slide. Here's the site plan. I'm not gonna go through all of, all of the site plans. It's hard to see from back there. It's out on the city website if you go to the Go Bond site. But it'll have paved parking, overflow parking, trailers. There's gonna be a boardwalk coming around here. Uh, floating docks, there will be restrooms. They are putting an observation pavilion out here on the end. There'll be a playground for kids. There's gonna be an open space. It's gonna be a lot of grass. Uh, there'll be some fitness equipment like you see at Joe Stonis, so you can do circuit training around that. There'll be a beach, if you want to go to the beach in the spreader canal. <laughs> I'll, save, I'll save you a spot. And there'll be a kayak launch there. And I think the kayak launch is being uh, funded. That wasn't in the original plan, but it was being funded by some tourism taxes that, that we get. And, and they actually decided to go ahead and use that money to put a kayak launch. So you'll actually be able to launch a kayak at Serenia Vista, Tropicana, and Crystal Lake and transit the entire north spreader. Crystal Lake, that's the one farthest to the north in our area. All the permits have been received and the bid package has gone out. Again, they expect about, this is a, a bigger neighborhood park, they expect it to be about a year uh, for that one to be, to be done. The go bond on this one was 3.2 million and it's up to 5.7 million. Uh, so you, you're starting to see a trend here of, of where these are from what the go bond was originally to where we are today based upon today's costs. So the design, I think this park is gonna be uh, probably one of my favorites. I've been up there a couple times already to check things out, but with the big lake in the middle, there's gonna be a walking path, restrooms, picnic shelters, sun shelters. They're actually having a food truck area up there. They have a popular food trucks that are happening now. So I think it can be a lot of fun up there and planning a day there with the activities. The one thing that I like the most up there is they put in the sunset overlook. If you haven't made your way up there, you're not supposed to transit go up to it now. They got stuff in front of it that you're not supposed to do. And signs tell you to stay off, but just walk up there anyway. <laughs> you can actually look out over Charlotte Harbor and see spectacular sunsets. And when they do this whole thing and they put benches up there, it's really going to be a, a magnificent place to go and, and see the wonderful sunsets we have here in Florida. That's also going to have a beach. That lake looks a little cleaner than the spreader canal, so maybe I'll go to that beach. Uh, boat and kayak lines, they put a scuba diving area they, they have in there. I guess that the lake is deep enough you can do some scuba diving. And again, the paved parking, grass overflow, and, and, and boat trailer parking as well. So I think it's going to be a pretty incredible park, uh, 360 days from the time that they shovel, put the shovels in the ground. Festival Park might be the one that, that's not talked about a whole lot, but it's a neighbor, it's a community park, so it's a, it's a bigger park. And it's gonna be one of the bigger parks that are gonna be built, and it's gonna have some pretty magnific magnificent things to it. The permits have been received. They've actually started doing some work out there, 
on, on terms of water and things like that because they'll be putting restrooms in. And the construction bidding has been out. It's gonna take longer to build because they're gonna do a lot more with this park, so 480 days. Originally, this was about a $6 million park and, and now it's a $10 million park. That is only for phase one. This is a two-phased park, and as it stands now, from what I understand from the city, they do not have funding for phase two. So it's one of those things where it's like, we design this and then we'll go get it, I guess, is what they're thinking. But the amenities here on phase one, I wanna keep stressing phase one, is you'll have a concession and restrooms, four soccer fields with lighting, and you'll see here, if you can see the diagram, again, this is out on the site, there'll be more soccer fields event, uh, put in in phase two, if we get to phase two that'll make this quite a, an activity park uh, for soccer and, and other events. There'll be a play area, there's gonna be a large pavilion. I think the biggest thing to this park that's exciting is the amphitheater. And they're gonna put the amphitheater, there's gonna be grass seating, and uh, it's gonna be, I think, two levels. So a smaller level and a bigger level, but look at the number of seats and the seating that can be put in to this park to, to bring in live music and other events to this amphitheater. And I think that is quite exciting. I, I, if you haven't been to the one with the luminary in Fort Myers and that they did there, that amphitheater, it's pretty spectacular. And hopefully they look at that as, a, as a, a template for what they can do for this park. The challenge is, next slide. Where is the park? Where is it? It's actually, if you go up from our house, I guess I got to speak from my house off of uh, Old Burn Store Road, we go up through El Dorado and then back through Kismet and, and go east. I forget the exact street name that it's on. But it's tucked back in there, it's hard to see. If uh, right now it's where the, uh, the airplane, the model airplane group has their area and they will be part of that, Paul. There you go. Say again? Wellington. Oh, Wellington. See it? Paul not only does all of our, our technical IT stuff, but he gives us directions. So it's, that's why we, it's awesome. Oh, so I, I wanted to talk about the, the interesting part about phase two is, and, and I'm learning about the city world and government, uh, it's always interesting. So this is all in phase one. The amphitheater itself is in phase two. So, so I don't know, uh, and hopefully, I, they haven't asked for my suggestion on this, but I would say maybe a private public partnership to have the amphitheater built so that we can actually use the grass seating that they're going to build. So, so it remains to be seen, and, and I'll keep in touch with the city on what they're gonna do to continue to develop. But I think it's gonna be a pretty spectacular park when, when we get there at some point in time. So that's it. Go to the BRC. Am I gonna go next? To BRC. Sure, okay. Okay. So I'm not John Smart. I didn't change quickly. Uh, I, just, I just play him uh, at times. So I get to, to talk about some, not only developing the parks, but what's the other developments. and. And forgive me, I, I probably won't do this justice like John does or could, but uh, I, a lot of it you know about already and maybe some of it are, are gonna be quite a surprise to you. So the first one we wanna talk about is, is Tranquility Lake. You know, that's been when up and down over the years, but it's finally up. It's actually, FEMA is using it now. They have, uh, what do they have, about 100 and 300 trailers? 200. 200 trailers in there right now. It was just by there the other, this weekend. And it's actually quite beautiful what they've done with it. They've landscaped it very well. It's got nice amenities when they've done. It's gonna have a pool, a dog park. I mean, it's gonna be a pretty high-end RV park for folks that wanna come visit the area. Uh, west of Veterans and Pine Islands. Uh, this is the one, this is going to be, if you go down, to, if you go in Burnt Store South, you used to see the, uh, the barber shop and the little uh, uh, stand there, the nursery. Tropicana. Tropicana. This is where this is all gonna be, uh, back in that area. So, uh, happy intersection at Burns Thorpe. Please get that done, Lee County, soon. Because uh, we're gonna need that done so that we can then tear it up and do it again. So we can put, get another lane in. Uh, so, I'm sorry, I have a question. Go. <laughs> it is going to be. It's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> well, and, and here's the thing, and, and again, I, John is, is better at this, so I, I'm probably going to muscle my way and get, over, get him in trouble. But think about it. Down past the McDonald's, right there, right? There's also another set of apartments going in that I think are 300 units. Then just in behind the coral. Where's the McDonald's? 
the McDonald's there by the Publix in that shopping center where the auto zone is. So there's a whole other set of apartments going like right there. Then even behind that is yet another set behind the Publix. So you can only imagine, as I said, please get that intersection done so we can tear it up and put another lane in. At, at some point in time, it, it's gonna be quite congested down through there. Let's be candid. Uh, Achieve a credit union, that's going at the Coral Shores that I just spoke about, that's next to the Auto Zone and by the McDonald's right there facing Pine Island Road. So they've already broken ground there and they're, they're moving ground and they're bringing in cinder blocks and that's going up pretty fast. The Springs and Coral Shores Apartments, uh, this is uh, on Pine Island, I'm not sure exactly where this one's gonna be on Pine Island, but you notice, and I think you'll see a theme of some of these that John is sharing, and that is you're seeing restaurants uh, as part of what they're developing and the frontal part of, of, of these developments. And hey, we need more restaurants, right? So we like to go out. The Atlantica of Cape Coral, again, uh, another area that's on Pine Island that we talked to, and Jerry mentioned the Pine Island Corridor. And I think you're gonna see through all these slides, Pine Island, Pine Island, Pine Island Corridor. And then you're gonna see Burn Store, Burn Store. So you can see that intersect, that's gonna be, be quite, quite crazy. Uh, I guess learn the back ways. Uh, so restaurant in that one as well. Uh, and again, more apartments, Bloomsbury Apartments. Uh, I think you're seeing a, a common theme with these again is apartments and restaurant and Pine Island. So there's three things that are pretty consistent with what, what, what's going on and what's developing. Coral Grove City Center, this one is, is really exciting and this is going in behind Bubba's, right? This is, yes. the entrance will be, be next to Bubba's from Pine Island, one of the entrances. And this is gonna be quite, quite an exciting, the investors that are doing this have done incredible uh, developments in Miami and other cities around the country. And they're, they're well known for doing these types of developments. They're well, they're well financed. These are, are guys that have a lot of have bees behind their names in terms of, of money and, and investments. And they want to try to make this a little bit more like old Florida when they develop it. So uh, what may be seen, but I think what you're going to see here and something that we, I know a lot of people have been asking for, not only are the restaurants, but more retail space so that we're not driving everywhere and, and it doesn't have to be a Dollar General, it can be something else, right? So um, you'll see here, there'll be like a city square and restaurants and stores around this perimeter with apartments as well. They're looking at uh, entertainment area. Uh, they're looking at an indoor sports facility in that area. They're looking at movie theaters. Hey, a movie theater would be nice to have close to, to, the, to the Northwest as well. So this is quite exciting. The signs were already up. Yeah. I think they're moving pretty, pretty fast. I saw the signs up the other day. So I think they're gonna move, move fairly rapidly on this one. Next one. And our, our favorite for some of us. <laughs> so this is the only slide I cared about. Um, just because I, I like goodwill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, goodwill. Yeah, I mean, I, I like total wine. I just don't like driving over to total wine. Because uh, they have, they, you know, they have too much to choose from. But, but, so that's going to be exciting to finally have a liquor store down the road besides the one at Publix and, and get a good assortment. Yes, sir, you need some liquor or? Uh, oh. Yeah. Could these roads around here handle the traffic? Yeah, I, I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not a traffic guy, but I, I just know today, even just driving every day today. Uh, traffic is, is uh, you know, when we're in season like this, is, is quite congested. And I don't think, this is just me speaking, uh, that the roads are, are, are ready for this kind of, of volume. And I think the city and the gentleman down here who goes to the traffic committee is gonna share some of the what he hears from the city on what they're planning, but they're probably a little bit behind to be candid with you. I mean, let's be honest. These developments are moving. Right, they're, they're moving. And by the time you build a road, <laughs> if you go up and down Burn Store, I, I just thought they were adding a lane, but this seems like it's a really fancy lane because uh, it seems to be taking a while. So you can only imagine what it'd be like to, to, to get that. I feel like they pave it and then you take it up and they pave it again. That's just, yeah. yeah. So I don't, it is, I don't like, yeah. So I don't think, I don't think it's, I, I honestly, I don't think so. And I think it's gonna take some real planning from the city to figure out this corridor because it's not only gonna be Pine Island, you think about it, it's gonna be Burnt Store, right from Charlotte, or uh, yeah, from Collier County, come all the way down, right? Charlotte County. 
Charlotte County coming down. We need to develop the burnt store corridor, which I think is one of my next slides because I'm trying to segue into that. That uh, it's going to be incredible traffic all the way down. So uh, more more apartments. This one's uh, east of Chiquita and, and Embers. And again, you're looking. These are like three, four hundred unit apartments that are that are going up. Luxury apartments. Next slide. And again, this is the Hadley. I, I will say at least one thing that, that with these apartment complexes that are going up, they're. The ones that have gone up are, are pretty spectacular. I mean, they're pretty beautiful the way they're landscaping. They're attractive. They're not just these run-of-the-mill throw-up apartments. They're really making the, the front areas of them attractive and landscaping and entrances and things like that. Uh, the club, I think this one, you're, you can see this one already. This one was pretty much built and, and up and running or, or close to being up and running. But again, you can see they've done a good job the way that they're kind of making it not just your run-of-the-mill apartment complex. It is, it is something that looks uh, pretty and you'd want to see. The Mellow Mushroom, this is uh, the guy that owns Gator Mike's, is, is going to put this one up. So it's, a, it's another restaurant. It's going to be right next to uh, where he has all his facilities, where he just put in the new uh, miniature golf course and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Siesta Lakes is behind, will go behind Coles. So there's another plot of land back behind Coles. And again, that's off of uh, Nicholas going back in that way where there'll be yet uh, again some more apartments. And there's already a big housing development back in there. I forget the name of it, but they're putting a couple hundred homes back in there already. So that's going to be a little bit of a, of a crazy area as well. Yeah, we should probably have kept the arborist guy here for a little bit longer. Uh, That'd be a great I, question for him. Right? Yeah, I, I think it, I think it, I think to, to ask him that I, I do know in, in listening and, and talking, particularly about the storage unit thing, that the city is requiring moving forward that there has to be a certain uh, amount of landscaping in front of every property when it borders a road, and that includes a sidewalk. And you'll see that if you've been here in this very room for the burnt store corridor meeting that the city had several months ago. They talked about that, that I forget how many feet of landscaping have to be off of burnt store before the building can start or parking lot can start. So they do require, I just don't, we'd have to ask the, the arborist or somebody in the city, that the, the city planning group. Uh, I think this is anything that's health and outpatient for us in the Northwest, I think is a good thing. We, it, let's face it, I mean, I. Being here since 2019, and, and I'm in the healthcare industry, we have a shortage here of, of things, of beds and doctors and things like that in relation to the amount of population that we're getting. And we're getting, that population is coming faster than what they're coming. So, so I think seeing things like this from Lee Health and Outpatient Center is, is gonna be pretty outstanding. And we already have that one center as well. It's kind of like a, a temporary, not a temporary, but a, Lower, lower level emergency room that you can go to, which is closer to us than trying to get down Del Prado because let's face it, we might get injured getting Del, down Del Prado. <laughs> so we may not even get a chance to get to the hospital. So, and then the last one, and, and, and Jerry's gonna make sure that I shut up on this one. So he, he's over there, he has a big pull that he's gonna pull me. So the biggest one that, that's probably gonna happen Moving forward, it's, it's Golf Gateway Resort, and this is Seven Islands. And this is actually not a picture of what it's gonna look like. This is their development on the East Coast. Uh, Jerry and I have had the opportunity to meet with the developer and, and get to know him a little bit, and, and there's gonna be more to come, and there'll probably uh, be a, another big meeting coming up uh, in the future with the developer. He's, more than happy to come in and, and, and talk with everybody and, and share his vision of what he thinks this will be and what he wants it to be. He, he shared it with us and, and we left, I think, impressed with that. He's, he's a Cape Coral guy, so he sort of gets it. Uh, he, he's part of this community. He lives here, he's part of it. He's been investing here for a long time. This is gonna be quite, quite a, an opportunity and, and quite a development moving forward. And, and like I said, uh, more to come on that one and, and in the very short period because uh, probably within the year or about a year we'll begin to see progress on, on seven islands and, and you know more than what it is today which is just a bunch of weeds and stuff. Yes sir. Since you seem to know so well you can ask them 
uh, the report that these buildings in, I think the lowest one is going to be four stories. What type of foundation they're going to put, uh, be putting in? And if they're going to be driving pilings in, I don't know if old barn store drop a can. Mm -hmm. All those houses are built on sand. Yeah. When they're driving pilings, there's going to be a lot of vibration. Maybe you could ask them who's going to pay for the damages if there are any. I, I think it, having him here and, and having a, a Q and A session like that—that's exactly that's a great question to, to ask him exactly how that that's beyond my my whole area. But I think uh, asking him those very questions, and that's why we talked to him. And we said, "Listen, you got to come out and, and meet the community and the Northwest community." And we've done that. We've had the Burn Store Corridor, the city planners here to talk about the Burn Store Corridor. So we we and well, I'll speak for Jerry. Uh, Jerry, can I speak for you? Sure. Okay. Please. <laughs> we 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 will we will we will have him come in. I think we had that we had the, the developer that was going to develop Island Pearl at the corner down here. We had a meeting where he, he came in and shared his vision, and I, and I think we will do the same with with uh, right. We'll, we'll have, I have him I'm, come in and, and talk and do a Q and A and. Yeah, you know, real quick. Um, you know, we have a lot of renderings, <laughs> but what's the vision of the developer? Right. It's kind of what we want to extract from you. What, it, what does it look like in his mind? So that, that you know, that's it. I mean, what does it look like? So we can't, we can't actually compare it to this outside of Palm Beach, but you know, it's, it's, he's an exciting person to talk to and I, and I really would love him to come, so. Yep. Yes, sir. Will the utilities be able to handle all this building? Oh, they're good. Right now, he keeps out everybody below Pine Island is boiling the water every once in a while. Yeah, I, I, I again, I can't, I, I think they're probably taking that all into consideration. Uh, that's probably goes back to the city in terms of what, what the capacity is, from, you know, with the, especially with the extension of the water and, and utilities going north and the, the UP3. When they're talking about their project, when they put a project like that in Seven Islands, do they also look at the infrastructure, the roads around it? I mean, think of Tropicana when that goes in and Embers and the flow of cars coming down. Me, it should be you know hand in hand that those roads get improved or, or changed at that time and then the last thing is you know with that being there and the number of boats in the marina they're talking about simply getting boats out to the bay is virtually impossible now Sometimes, yeah you know, yeah I, <clears throat> You can, you, can, you can tell me to be quiet right. yeah i mean i really yeah. <laughs> it's uh you know, we, we you know we meet a we, we meet the developer. We have breakfast together. We meet outside, right on site, and there's some things off the record that we share, and we want things on the record, you know, and we do. And so, what I don't want to do is miss that. I, I think that I, I think as a resident, just like you, this is this this is why I'm here. Seven Islands is, you know, so so important to. You know, when you look at that, a vibrant waterfront community, this is this could be a draw for the entire state. Look at look at the Southwest. There's nothing like this where you can walk, you can have your lunch, and there goes a dolphin, right? There's a manatee, you know. So it's very unique. But that meeting's coming, and I think what I'm trying to do is, is rescue Kevin from it. But um, <laughs> but how, how great would it how great would it be to have the developer where I'm standing yeah. and I'm sitting there with you? Right. Yeah, and I can tell you that, uh, and, and I think if you look back from the NWNA for, for the past probably year, we've talked in, with the city about putting uh, a second cut in, in there and, and probably a, even a third cut at some point in time. And those, those, those discussions with the city were productive. There's other things that have to be taken into account around the mangroves and all that and probably a conversation for another time. But we, we certainly understand all that. And, and I, I vote, I live up, up here, I vote down through there. I know I know what it's like, especially, in, and honestly, when I walk my dog at Serenia Vista and I watch the boats fly by at the speed that they're not supposed to be flying by, I always think to myself, who's the next one that's gonna get hit? So we, person that gets hit on the kayaks, we certainly understand that and, and all those considerations we put forth. I think it's great that you're adding all these kayak launches 
you're already baking analysis and you're going to add in thousands of bogus slips to seven islands. I never crossed anybody's mind that seven islands should be put to an absolute halt until they do the opening first, because right now our canal system is dangerous. It's full. Mm -hmm. Someone is going to get killed. Is it going to take someone to get killed for them to finally say, we need to open another opening? But yeah. seven hours should be put to a halt until that opens. Down. Well, I'll just say that I think the developer fully understands all of that. Yeah, the developer and the developer understands that as much as we we shared that with him as well, and I think it will all come together as one. To be candid with you, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want to ask you a question about Tropicana Park. I like to <laughs> I like to know what the city has decided to do with the rowing club that they were going to give practically free parking for that club on our taxpayer park. My husband and I were very active in getting flyers out about that and, and I'm ready to do it again. <laughs> yeah, so you, you've probably seen that the, the rowing club is on island number three right now. Yes. And the, the city uh, has not changed their plans at this point in time. Their, their plan is to still put the rowing club on Tropicana at the south east corner mm -hmm. yeah, of the park. I, I'll just be candid with you, and it, it's going to be interesting with the development of Seven Islands, how that will all kind of work out long term, because somehow I don't see them all kind of getting along in that small space. But, but, but they're planning to do that. They're still planning to do that. How can they put a private club on taxpayer land? That yeah. is not right. I know, I know. And honestly, that's how I got into the NWNA. So. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a council meeting to speak against that. Sir? Right. Getting back to, the, getting back to the, the cut and, and having other um, ways out the hall. The breach exists already. Um, what's better? My neighbor, Mark and I, we've been through it, we've been all the way out. We find we've not gone out to the harbor, but come back, it's a treacherous ride. Um, we've done it only in May. So I don't know the condition now after the storm. Bottom line is, it exists. You can go all the way through it. I don't I don't recommend doing it right now, but it needs anger of cutting. From what I understand, um, the city already has the ability to trim up to 25% of the mangrove. It needs some dredging, it needs mm -hmm. some rocks removed, and it needs some, some uh, markings. But it exists. It, you can go from yeah. the North Spreader all the way out right now with a small boat, and like I said, carefully, don't do it now. But we're not talking about Army Corps and putting new cuts or anything else. We're talking about heading north on the Spreader, not going down or towards Seven Islands, maybe. You know, it exists. I don't know why that's not a priority. You know, certainly not. Yeah. You know, in in what I saw with the NWNA, we went from, you know, what I thought would be a breach Please. action plan to now cut feasibility. We do want feasibility. Let's get that thing going. And if you just want volunteers to do it, we're ready to go. Get a couple of parties. We'll get, I'm right here. And, you know, I know John, I've talked to John about this many times. I know John's here because I'm going to speak for it. But the bottom line is, it exists. We shouldn't be sitting Results of our survey. Well, I just did. Yeah. I wrote a, a little bit of a, 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 a long winded yeah, long winded uh, answer. No, no, not me. No, but seriously, so it really should be a number one priority because it's going to help facilitate a lot of these, uh, um, you know, a solution for a lot of these problems that we're, we're coming into as we continue to grow. Like those systems that we never heard for our road systems. We're putting all this in. Now we're doing it for the same thing for the canal systems, and we don't even have the infrastructure for it now, but we're going ahead with it. Yeah. We're doing it backwards. Well, where are we now? <laughs> okay. 
Go ahead. The city, so that intersection is a Lee County. So the burn store is Lee County. So Lee County was in, in control of that. I mean, a lot of people thought that the city was in control of that. Lee County was in control of that and taking care of that. And I will tell you, I know and Jerry is working on the slides, so I'm going to try to stall for a bit. But um, Jerry, I, I don't know how the Lee County communicates out on that. I just know that uh, we we talked, and, and Jerry, you know, talked a lot with the Lee County and the commissioners about the Tropicana intersection and and the, the police department and uh, was really a part of that and I'll let him speak to that. I don't know how Lee County communicates out that they're going to close a road or if they even communicate that out to anybody or if you can even sign up to get, get those updates. But if you want to speak to that quick. I live, I live off Tropicana. My wife and I have tw five kids in their 20s driving down that road I went down there so how we how we got heard there very simply we we called the city and then you have you talk to the police you talk to dispatch you talk to controlling speed same thing now the county's in the second position when it comes to handling and responding an accident so Cape Coral police is not available the county is second there so in talking to the county, talking to the sheriff's department, and finally meeting our commissioner, Kevin Rowan, over at a Pine Island meeting with FEMA, I challenged his people to say, why do we have to bother Kevin with this intersection when he's traveling back and forth to Tallahassee, trying to house 200 people in Pine Island over at Tranquility Lakes? Why do we have to bother him? Let's get this done. Tell me what we have to do. They, they informed me about a month ago that the, the crossover from Embers, I believe it was, or going into uh, Publix would be closed. And they said two weeks later that Tropicana would be closed. So, and they did do just that. But it was the DOT that was, and I think the DOT is probably gonna get involved with these median areas where the curbing is and everything else. So we're learning as we go. I mean, I've just been, We've been thrown to the fire, Kevin, and I, I know there hasn't been a lot of meetings here because of COVID, but there's a lot going on. I mean, we could probably go all night, but um, we have made some difference. I mean, we really have. Um, I, I think we read about that in the news press. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so if, if, if you will, um, we got through, you know, we can spend a whole night with John Smart on development, you know, but I do want you to know this, okay? I have a little bit of experience in my past life with complete streets, main street programs, and I will tell you this. Utilities, when you see fire hydrants, you're gonna get developed. When the utilities are in the street, that's what the developers need to turn the switch. When the developers are done, retail follows people. When the retail follows people, you need to have built out apartments you need to have a lot of volume of people for retail. That's why we don't have any restaurants here. We don't have any stores here. So, but I think it's our job as residents to really look at, okay, great, you're gonna develop here, but look, this is what we want, okay? So I wanna to go to the survey, and if Lenny can go to the next slide. This was about, how about Kathy? Kathy, what, about a month? And a month ago what is your number one priority and this was at 166 people so it was a nice cross-section spread or exit number one I'm a boater okay I'm a boater too and I and here's what we learn now there's been some statements made that hey let's get the waterway fixed or constructed properly to handle development. I can tell you it's going on simultaneously. It, when, I, when I saw some reports on the news about this, they had a PhD talk about the word flushing the spreader canal. It's funny, when you go 
to the Caloosahatchee in the canal system, you have all these exits that go directly into the Caloosahatchee. The southwest spreader, northwest spreader, you're dead ended on a spreader. Okay, so the way to get this done, I understand that everybody wants a spreader by, okay, let's put three more. Okay, our property value is going to go up. You know, we can get out to the harbor quicker, we can go into the pass. But the way to get this done is, is really environmentally. I'm looking at and paying for studies. I want, to, I want to do some dinner fundraising for this group. But we need to pay people to really look at, if we, can, if we can really clean up the water through flushing, well, guess what? We can get boats out of here. But it's the primary focus has to be the, the whole ecosystem, and that's how you get things done. And I, and I think we have a plan starting to develop about that. But it, it doesn't work when you go and say, we want, we want to cut our time out to the Gulf, okay? There, there is a benefit to flushing, and that's a word you're going to hear more. Yes, sir? I guess the other point, though, that I was trying to make is that we're not creating a new um, benefit or means of flushing, which I think that was the old you know, studies that were being done. If we put in other crop, what's going to happen? The bottom line is, it does it the meeting that we had was last February, and now uh, Mayor Gunther was there. It indicated at the time that this the breach would be the priority once the Chiquita block was, was finished. And the, you know, all the approvals were gathered for that. Mm -hmm. So we're here now. And that's my understanding the approvals for all that are done. So, we need to get back with the mayor and say, okay, you know, last year we talked about it. He, as a matter of fact, the mayor, I believe, has also traveled the breach. So he knows, he knows exactly what's there. And he had indicated at the time that that would be the next priority um, in terms of in terms of the spreaders. Yeah, I think, you know, there is an existing way out without cutting any mangroves. But that's my point. Yes. We, we've traveled it. That we've way. gone end to end. Yeah, I fully support it. I mean, I think, you know, there's a lot of, most of us, these focus projects, we support these. We just need to find a way to get it done. And my point is, we should already have the mayor's backing, and we need to work with that and, and turn it into an action plan and not start with studies again. It's my, my, my concern. Study again. We're studying and studying and studying. Study. Yeah, and yes. the feasibility studies that, that, that they were doing, and I guess at the time, the end result you know, this study was that, well, we could put more and more, but we think we're talking about so many areas where uh, Crystal Lake is. And then the breach popped up. And the breach is right. Right. I, well, it's there. So that's my right. point is, you know, we can, you know how it is in business, and we can just study things to death. My, my point is, in anything that we're doing now, I think we should remove the words feasibility study. We should be talking about action plan. And we should be dealing with steps to get that done, <laughs> as opposed to steps to study it and we'll be studying it again and again and again and again. And you know, we'll be here again in five years and just start moving forward with some of these other projects. And it's gonna be a nightmare. It exists, we just need the ability to uh, open it up a little bit. Why can't we do that? Yeah, I, 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 I Yeah, so, I'm listening. This is, believe me, I mean, this, this is something that we, we have, you know, here we have, um, a million dollar deposit to go forward with seven islands and you have 300 boat slips uh, a marina and everything else and the this is come you know one of the things I just wanted to bring up that I, that I read from a PhD was the sediment for, from Ian and when you look at bacteria kind of settling into the spreaders because everything kind of contaminates there but I think there's concern from that community as the weather turns and we get warm because heat grows bacteria, bacteria depletes oxygen. And I think we're looking at what's going to happen a month or two from now when that water heats up. And uh, you can see the dead fish, you can see the red tide. I've been in the sprayer. Um, these, sorry, these are, these, these, might have to shout. But these these issues are coming. This isn't this is we're we're hearing you. This is the number one priority. So this is something we will be working on. Number one. 
Yes, sir. Could that make sense to kind of have a two prong approach? Take the, the penalties to just as good as what he's talking about. Is it already start working with the mayor who's on board with it and talk about getting the mayor on one approach? On one approach. Test. Concur concurrently, having you work with not only Seven Islands developer, but then uh, an environmentalist and having the Seven Islands developer uh, financing some of that ecosystem impact and have them look at whether or not that's going to happen. They're going to want to play it along. Yeah, I think, I think the developer is, you know, how do you get a 40-foot boat, you know, through Mount Lachey right now, right? right? And so that's what I'm saying. You know, so how do you, how do, how do Tampa Bay people who want to come here for spring bay, for spring training and want to bring their boats to the hotel over here, that's going to be, right? So, Folly, I'm just pressed for time on this issue, but I wanted to share with you that it is number one. So guess what? It's a number one priority. Right now, for my yeah, numbers. Let's just, I suggest starting now, we change the terminology from feasibility study to action plan. Something that says we're serious about it now and we want to do something about it now. We don't yeah, we are. That. We are. No, yeah. my, my, my point is sometimes words make a difference. And when you talk about it from the standpoint of study, it's different than saying action. And, and we need to get people looking at what we're trying to do and what we're trying to push differently. But I'm going to sit back and wait for study after study after study to get things done. Yeah, studies don't get things done. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about. 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 That is a wonderful idea. Sir, you have to come up and join my committee on this. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I mean, John. Yeah, we'll, we're going to hang around here a little bit after. Um, but yes, we'll, we'll talk more. i got to watch my time here. So. Ask John, mention Lewis and Clark. <laughs> All right, Seven Islands was number two, and I think, you know, most people realize this is happening now. I think there was a question whether that was going to happen, and this is going to happen. You look at the tremendous investment of $20 million there compared to $100 million up in uh, Hudson Creek, and waterfront property, I mean, tremendous investment for a forest, and then you look at our number three priority, uh, what is it? Seven Islands. So the spreader exit, Seven Islands. They all join together, okay? So it gives us a real focus on the 166. Next slide. <laughs> I'm almost afraid now. <laughs> All right, so uh, would you like to make a line and just come up? <laughs> Sir? Yeah. I got two questions. What's the update on uh, Island Pearl or what that is, that is called? Now? Island and Pearl? Also, uh, Kev, come on up. The resort that was talked about by the virtual ramp. Oh, yeah. I think, the, I think oh, that was yeah. it. I think, uh, uh, so uh, While we're talking, uh, Linda, Linda, maybe you want to put up the John Smart slide. We had the, an update on the. Uh, the burn store ramp development. There was a slide there, I think. Oh boy, I don't want to get into Walmart. Uh, no, let's move on beyond that one. Um, we didn't talk about all No, I got something. Uh, I didn't see anything about the burn store. I thought he had it in here. Well, let's let's just let's just talk about yeah, it. Come so, on up. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna, yeah. That is that is moving forward, from what I understand. Uh, as well, it's going to be. Um, I'll find it for you. The Atlantica, go back. Yeah, Atlantica. Yeah, is that it? Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's it. No, no, no. It's a different one. We can get you. We can get you the details on it. But that, uh, I think that's already started with the city to work in terms of the background development on that. But we can have John put it out on the website, right? Or, let, let, let's um we're filming this but I, I don't want we don't want the crowd but just for our for our sake if you're number one going back to the survey focus project put your hand up if the number one number one interest of yours personally is the spreader canal the exit so it's consistent very consistent and seven islands I mean, this is helpful, and uh, 
Well, uh, let's let's look at the utilities, the cost of the utilities, and that project. Okay, people are banking on a thirty-year deal. All right, and uh, so you know it's it's pretty telling here when we look at the beautification is part. You know, I, it, it's not. We don't isolate it so much as a focus project, but when you look at the work that has to be done, I think it'll be very telling when we get developers to show and we start talking about these projects and we can fire away, but uh, more questions, more questions. Is there anything there, sir? Those requirements are being put up. Are any of them uh, addressing affordable housing? Or are they all high cost or high end? There's a certain percentage. There's a certain percentage that have to be allocated toward that. So, as they are built, you know, we just have to see, right? Um, we'll get as soon as we have the applications and we're looking at them. You know, when you look at affordable housing, I think it's just a small percentage of the overall project and the number of units. And uh, our real estate professionals in the room, Sam, run across it at all? Yeah, percentage of overall project. Yeah, I don't know what the actual percentage yeah. is, but it's a constant issue as price goes up, interest rates go up, but people's income. Yeah, it's tough. To, it's tough to it's, determine it's, that. It's a constant battle. The Sam's Club project is, uh, I forget the name of the, the part of the It's largely affordable housing. Uh, and all the Yeah, it's a little bit of catch. Okay. And what is affordable, by the way? You know, what a waitress can afford is affordable versus maybe a teacher fresh out of high school college might be a little different. Yes. Even though their 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 income is not huge, there's still a big disparity there. So I, I, that's one of the issues I've always had with the term affordable housing. Are we talking welfare or are we talking about Okay. Yes, ma'am. Well, what, what we want to do is we, want to, we really want to survey and get a huge response. The follow-up for us is my, my real quest as president is to build the organization. Not only build the brand, but our reach. And we are, like we talk, you know, I just point blank asked this gentleman to see if he can start a committee, but we have a daunting task. There's a lot of work being done just by a small group here. And we are going to need some volunteers, sir. We are. And, uh, you know, do you, is everyone here getting the bulletins? Is everyone here getting the emails? I think we've, we really try to do a really good job at that. So our takeaway from this meeting is, okay, we, we have some direction and I'm an implementer. So I'm also a, like a, I'm a promoter. I am a promoter. John is great at, you know, when you look at John Bashaw, he was tremendous at just getting into the weeds of zoning and everything else. But I'm more on the promoter. So I, we are right on the cusp of an explosion of development. We are gonna need to expand this organization. We're volunteers, I'm just a neighbor like you guys. I think we're gonna need to assign people and start to build these committees, so. Um, we'll extract the information that we've learned tonight. It, it validated what our survey said, but there's more to come. I, we are going to have more meetings. I, you know, I really want to do a May meeting. 
I think we have to get together. I think we have to do some social events, but we really have to know one another because my fear is that one day I'm in front of a group, whether it's a developer, whether it's elected officials or anyone else, right? I wanna make sure that the message that I'm portraying, Kevin, any one of our chairmen, chairpeople, officers, we have the correct pulse of our organization as a whole. So that's why, that's why we, for me today, it was just, what do the members want? And I really, I really understand now what it is. So committees, putting together a plan, a strategic plan to move forward and assigning committees to assemble on the focus project. That's next. So like a, a cut committee, a seven islands committee, someone is gonna stay on top of that? Like yes, that kind of okay. yes. Yeah, I think we need it because we're kind of maxed. You know, sir? Kind of a random question, but uh, who's in charge of getting all the water bodies out of the game here? <laughs> <laughs> Call 311. <laughs> um, so, so what do you think? What, I mean, are we heading in the right direction? To, you know, I mean, do you think we care enough? Uh, you know, it's really important to uh, come from a big family. We talk about, we, you know, we argue, we talk, we do everything, but it's important that we talk. We need to communicate. Call me. You know, you don't have to wait for a meeting. You know, please call Kevin. Call myself. It's um, <laughs> you know, we have a lot of work to do. We don't have all the answers. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh man, we're ready. You know, there's a lot to do. We are going to get pushed around, but you know, we're we're pretty tough. You know, we're pretty tough as a community, sir. A while back, the city was talking about applying for grants to help absorb the cost of the uh, utilities. Have you heard anything else about that? No, but um, Don Freeman, you know, Don Don wanted to be here. He he really is the guru. I, I filled in for him. I mean, oh, he's just really good. And you know, Don Don, you can get right on Don Freeman at NorthwestCape.com. So fire, you know, utilize us. Utilize our Chair people, um, please. I mean, the more we can communicate, the better. That's that's what forges relationships. Spread the word. Yeah. Spread the word. About our organization. Yeah, yeah. Um, I see what you see. Uh, you know, we care. I'm gonna. I'm really gonna miss Linda. We may not see her again for the next meeting, but uh, I do want to offer her uh, a really my my gratitude, and I think you should all do the same. Ralph Huber, thanks for joining us. He came out of nowhere. Um, reach out to us, please. I think we'll, we'll wrap this up. We'll hang out a little bit. And uh, thanks so much for coming.